C'est pas son frère, non? C'est Jean Fella. C'est pas dame ta passé, moi t'en dérèle. En moi, yon s'en mique ta batte, mais moi je dis. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to Canapé Crème. Today is our third episode and we will be discussing a serious, a very serious topic today. Um, our topic of discussion today is domestic violence. And it's something that's affecting the Haitian culture, the Haitian community at home, overseas, everywhere. And the men don't get it. They seem to not understand. So. We're here today with our guest, um, Kirby Samti, who's on the show. And um, today we're going to basically discuss everything, give our ideas, our inputs, and um, basically to see what we can do, what we can say to kind of change their minds in some kind of way. Um, so are we ready to begin? Let's go. Sure. Let's go. Okay. So before filming this episode today we did some research and we found out that in a city in um, New York uh, the area where most of the Haitian Haitian American live Flatbush there was a domestic violence hotline um, survey that was conducted and um, basically out of 57,000 phone calls that they received within six a six month period 67 percent of these phone calls which were related to domestic violence came from the Haitian community. What what do you guys think about that? I mean, I feel that this is outrageous. This is crazy. Yeah, um, like you said, it's really outrageous to hear that 67% um, mm -hmm. of the phone call came from Haitian women. Mm -hmm. um, growing up in the Haitian family, the Haitian culture, I never thought that Haitian men were so disgusting mm -hmm. to be um, abusing their partner at a... Um, this person, it's outrageous. There's yeah. nothing I want to say about that. It's really sad. And um, what I want to know is that, is exactly why did this thing happen? Why these women, they don't speak out? Why? What, what do you guys think? Well, we'll get into that. Okay. But um, what do you guys think about the survey? Um, personally, um, I want to start to begin, I mean, I want to start by saying we don't hate Haitian men. Mm -hmm. It's not to say they all bad, we don't want to be with them. We are all with Haitian men and we love our Haitian men and they're actually great men. But that doesn't take away from the fact that there are a lot of the Haitian men that actually um, do a lot of the, those things. They beat on their women, they cheat and they do that. So we have to attack those issues and make sure that, you know, maybe we can change one thing or two. Mm -hmm. uh, so as to um, the survey that Jeannie was referring to, I'm not at all surprised that a lot of Haitian women are going through that mm -hmm. um, because I do think that it's a cultural clash. Um, in Haiti, it's such a patriarchal society where mm -hmm. men rule everything. Exactly. So women didn't feel like it was a problem to have their men do certain things to them because that's, that's how things that's went the back norm, there. Yeah. But as they come up here or to the states to a more westernized society um they see how other women are speaking out and you know they're not gonna take the fact that their men would beat them up because we have 911 and we're not afraid to use it that, i have a thing too mm -hmm. i do understand that you know okay most of us if we came to the u.s or to canada mm -hmm. while we're young like let's say our age then yes we are going to embrace that Western culture of course. and be like, nigga, you touch me, I'm dialing 911. Yes. Mm -hmm. But then there are some who come from Haiti who are already in their 30s and their 40s and they were already used to that. They don't speak English. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of, you know, dialing 911 because they don't know what they're going to do without that man. They're like, mm -hmm. rely heavily on that man. So, but you also have to understand wherever misery is it still feels bad in haiti the only difference there is that not even now i would say even more back in the days they couldn't do much about it but i don't believe it's because most women are happy to be mistreated so even if you're in your 30s 
if you couldn't do anything about it then you kind of take a resolution to be like i have to live with it mm -hmm. but once you hear um women in their 50s are revolting mm -hmm. just because they can now so i feel like even if they're older, they can still revolt and say, I don't have to take it from you anymore because it doesn't feel good. It's not a great um, place to be in. Mm -hmm. So that's why in the survey, I believe, they finally found an outlet to let out their anger or what they're going through. Mm -hmm. I don't think these women are all in the, their 20s or you know, yeah. teen years. They mm -hmm. probably older women that have been going through it for, through it for a long time, but didn't believe that they could have spoken out. Mm -hmm. So now that they have a way, somebody's telling them, "You actually can tell us if your husband is doing that to you." Mm -hmm. So they are making those letting it calls. be known. Yeah. So what about you, Jasmine? What do you think about the survey? Well, what I can say is this: from my point of view, the reason why most of the women are not or maybe most of the women that have been abused, your backup who report that, most of the time it's because they're illegal. Because they always have that fear. If I call 911 and I'm illegal, I might get deported. So if I just sit here and take it, because most of the time the guy or the one, even though they're illegal, they still go out there and try to make that money. Mm -hmm. so the moment you call 911 and report that guy, he go to jail. And now you have to think, wait, my bills, food, kids, how am I going to take care of all that? So at the end of the day, they end up staying with that guy even though they know, okay, I know he's going to beat me up, but I'm relying on him because I can't take care of my kids. I can't take care of myself. So they think, it'll get better. The guy was like, they done, the guy done doing what he did. And then he come be like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So the female always believe it, okay, okay, it was, it was a mistake, he's not going to do it again. Mm -hmm. But he just come back and he do it again and he keep on doing it and whatever. But at the end of the day... I think the female that finally had speak lived, up. they finally speak out and call 911, I give them props because even though I've never been abused, I don't think abusing anyone, it doesn't matter a woman, a child, a man or whatever, the abuse, it's not something that we as human or we as females should have to go through just so a man could feel like, you I'm a macho, I'm a man. So I'm going to beat my wife so I can feel like I'm buff and tough. Okay, so. but you're saying um, about, you know, people who live here and the bills and deportation, all that stuff. What about the women who are in Haiti? Because that's where most of the thing is happening. It happens at home, and then where if they get the chance to travel, then it continues here. Like, well, what's, what I need to say about that is because um, the reason why you don't really... Well, the, first of all, I was surprised by the, um, the statistic, the percentage mm -hmm. that you mentioned. And I'm very proud of those women for speaking out because most of the time the problem with Haitian women is that they take in the Haitian community, they don't want people to know their business. So the fact that neglect bat you shagju, they're not gonna speak out. You have to okay because they're afraid that somebody might judge them or they're afraid that people the first thing people might tell them is that oh for, for leave your relationship, leave your man because it's not worth it if he's beating you up. So um, I think usually these Haitian women, they feel so scared to you know, come out and speak out and let the world know that, listen, I'm getting abused by my man. And it's really sad. Okay. So uh, the next thing that um, I want to, to mention is um, um, in Haiti, what causes these women to suffer so much? Because in Haiti, you don't take things seriously. Parce que y a une bonne fille, elle abuse yo, y a le code police. Police, they laugh at them. They're like, are you serious? You're reporting domestic violence? Because for them, for us in our culture, I, I'm guessing, for us in our culture, it's not a big thing. You grow up, you see your dad beating your mom, and it's the norm. And you end up doing the same thing, and the same thing continues for generation and generation. So, well, for what I can say is this, for this part, I don't think if you go to someone that, okay, I'm going to use that word, but people might get offended. If you go to a commissary where they have people that are educated, for them to laugh at you. But it's not about education. It's, it's culture. Because, it's, it's culture. It's, it's, not, it's not about that's education. The thing. That's the thing. The whole thing, you guys are saying, it's culture. There's nowhere in our culture that says it's okay to be the woman. It's the men that's doing it. And it's if I go to a police station, I'm like, yo, my, my husband is beating me and you laugh at me. I'll make a tattoo. 
Why? Because you here you're supposed to tell you're supposed to protect me. Yeah. When when you become a cop, you swear to protect and serve. Okay, but, you can say but, something like that in a country that. Position. Keep on keeping a position, sir. Not to pose your adult men, and that's why they're gonna laugh at you because. You a woman, you're gonna say, oh man, whose side you think they're gonna take? Doesn't matter. We live in a patriarchal society. Doesn't matter if it's Haiti, if it's the Western, it's patriarchal period. Yeah, that's when you take and justice men? into your own head. Yeah, bad advice. <laughs> what do you bad. have to say, Kirby? No, what do you have to say? Because, like, we know in Haiti, Le pap, le mari ou bien papa sorti travail, manger le sous table, everything. Oh, can I take off your shoes? We yeah. treat them as kings. Kings, that's and the problem. And when they're beating us up, then it's like we just we're have to sit to there and take it. it. It's not an education thing. It's a culture thing. We're the one who's doing this to ourselves. But then again, you have to. I also wanted to touch on that because it comes down to a different, um, a difference in generation. Men probably grew up seeing their mom or um, their stepmom serving their father, putting the foot on the table, because maybe, maybe she was doing that because she was a stay-at-home mom. She had nothing else to do. But when we both working eight hours shift, and I'm tired, just like you're tired, I feel like some men don't understand that I can't do the same thing your mom was doing um, for your dad, not because I love you less, but because we live in a different world. Mm -hmm. We both have to be working to pay the bills. So if I'm working eight hours, you're working eight hours, whatever it is that we have to do in the house has to be, you know, we have to split it in half. Mm -hmm. Some days I feel like you have to cook me a meal and <laughs> take off my shoes and all this, not because I'm higher than you, you beneath me, but it's the society we live in. If mm -hmm. we are splitting the bills, um, you know, I have to work as much as you do. We have to split everything else in, in yeah, our house. But the, the issue is, Kirby, with what she said is that that's true though, but that's for Haitian men who really grew up in the Western. Yeah. Let's think about the Haitian men who really grew up in Haiti. They don't really see it as, I don't have to share anything 50 50 with you. No. My, you, my woman, Madame Moe, what come you offer manger, they don't care if you come from it's work. You still have to do it. Yeah, it's mostly like they treat their women as their property. Mm -hmm. They're still mm -hmm. not a partner. Mm -hmm. And but this have to stop. It's the same thing I'm telling you guys too. It's, I don't care what you guys tell me, it's a lack of education. Because every time, <laughs> bro, let me tell you. <laughs> So can you guys give an example, like can you guys tell me, we've been around where we used to go to church in Haiti, we've been around these people, let's say if you don't have a man, you have a man okay, mm -hmm. now tell me what men in our church where we used to go, where people were fully well educated, that was traveling to educate themselves, well, we don't know that, just me, no, no, this no, doesn't no. have anything to do with Listen, anything, I was no. speaking, wait, wait, I was speaking to Marla yesterday, and she studied police foundation, and she was telling me that you'd be surprised at the type of men who abuse their women. Doctors, lawyers, people with money. Education. Education. Because they have money? And no, they, they have, have education it. too. Jimmy. Education means nothing. If a man is going to abuse a woman, he's going to do it education, regardless. Education does not mean you go to school. You can go to school and you're not educated. Do you know that? Well, there's different yeah, type of education. But what are you talking about? Educate. I'm talking about different type of education. No, I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about school. There's a lot of people that go to school, but they're not educated. I'm saying that people that are well-mannered, like you, your parents to, um, tell you. Okay, and that's something values. that's completely different. So people with values. Okay, values. Okay, okay let's say people with values. Not the, the okay. education. So let's say people you go to school. Well, there's, there's different type of education. Let's say values. People with values. You're not tell, gonna tell me you're a man with values and then you're gonna be like, because your wife didn't cook, you're gonna beat up your. Now, let's tell me, tell me that if you live in, I don't know, not can go to boss or tea, if you, you see your mom and your dad are like fighting every day and then you keep doing it, so nobody ever take the time out to be like, yo, this is how you're supposed to be. This is how you're supposed to treat your wife because you never ever had that home training. All you see is mama leve le matin si va me chuta bla papa batli ou bien papa a papa batli ma gani pa la ve papa batli. So guess what? You're gonna grow up being the same way, but the same way you could be my friend and you can be my neighbor. I see your mom doing that and I see my mom doing that. I'm not gonna do it. Because maybe I had someone that pulled me aside and be like, yo, this is not the way you're supposed to live. When you have your wife, treat her different. So that person will treat that person different. So when you guys are saying it's a culture thing, every culture has something. But I don't think beating your wife is in the culture. It's 
the lack we're of not, we're not saying that the your wife culture, is in the culture is the, the culture. Haitian culture your bag that's not that's not important for us no bag that's not important that's not important for you yeah that's who exactly. else if it's not us women okay so we because if you if you look at it let's just say in a family where there's boy and girls kim on your to last year you'll have your wife on you if your kid gets class got fed bag in the car so obviously they are married to they don't expect to do anything. It's the same thing. Their yeah. wife they expect their wife to do everything. So really it's a culture thing. Then now you that's when you're gonna sit up and be like, yo, I have a job, you have a job, I'm not gonna do everything. Okay, I know, I know, I know that. Okay, we're digressing, going on different things. We're talking about domestic violence here. Okay, okay so let me ask one question. Drop one question in the air and you guys give me your opinion starting on Kirby. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first question. We're let's let's think of this as women in Haiti. Mm. Or women here too. Haitian women everywhere. Haitian women everywhere. Yeah. So the first question is, why are women so afraid of reporting abuse to authorities? And then the second question is, why are they so dependent on men? So Kirby, go. I believe that mesdames yo peur reporter pour qui ça soit mari ou abatio. C'est plus parce que une fois c'est jazz qui te dit ça en vain yo peur perdu help you to gain après parce que si nous non ca c'est ca pièce en lié euh on va remettre dans timonio timonio après c'est pour yo et bill yo après tout so leur retirer 50% income qui te gain dans calan et gain quelque bagarre qui fall through the cracks so it shouldn't be a reason why people mm -hmm. stay in an abusive relationship but i feel like most of the time that's the reason they stay because um if they go they not gonna have the help like i have a friend um her husband is not mostly physically abusive but i feel like he's um like verbally, verbally abusive mm -hmm. like the things that he says to her always um kind of like don't give her enough compliments mm -hmm. or telling her she's not doing things right mm -hmm. and for me i'm sensi like he pan a relationship la parce que li reme moun all that much anymore parce que tout ça tout like all the conversations that they have c'est toujours la jure dire li pa fè sa bien or what not but i feel like it's okay who's going to pay the rent mm -hmm. who's going to pay the electricity which is very sad because that shouldn't be a reason mm -hmm. why someone stay in a relationship yeah. Yeah. and i think one of the reasons that they stay is because um not only that they looking at the um you know the home being split and then she have to worry about who's going to do this or that but also um on pile madame yo était dans la relation ça c'est parce que pour timonio parce que on va venir là on était marié d'un côté voilà timonio who's going to take because usually in the Haitian community c'est messi à travail qu'a fait tout bagaille madame non juste là qu'elle arrive like a stay stay at home mom that's what they call them so basically they don't really have the support in Haiti especially they don't have support like welfare that thing they they can go to. Mm -hmm. So best basically that's why they decide to stay in those relationships. Well I guess Kyle and Kirby cover everything I was gonna say because pretty much it's the same thing I'll say but the only thing I can add into what Kyle and Kirby said regarding um people that are being abused is the fact that um sometimes the men know that they're gonna get away with it because they know that the female is afraid of them mm -hmm. because once they build that fear they feel comme se fait fi a peur yo n'importe ça yo dit fi a gitan courir yo n'importe ça c'est fi a gitan courir al faire bas parce que yo pa vle pou pou mon nan bat yo parce que yo connais depuis mon nan fin bat yo ou rele maman ou maman ça maman pral c'est gain que maman cap dit OK quitte mariage là voilà fait pas gain que maman cap dit on te dit ça on te dit comment il y a un tel pour tout pas te donner là like they not gonna find that comfort that they need from anyone mm -hmm. So that's why some of them are afraid. They're like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna just sit there and then take, take it. it. Mm -hmm. And then when something, when somebody asks me, oh, pourquoi ça joue en fleurs? Oh, t'es tombé au milieu des fois pour côté. Yeah, pour t'en c'est battre à manger. But they just have that fear. And that's why I said too at the beginning. I say some of them they're afraid that people might judge them. Or people yeah. might say, oh, your husband beating you. They don't want people to know their business, yeah. so they keep mm -hmm. it inside the home. Yeah. So that's one of the reason why they continue to get abused. Yeah. Okay. So. um one more thing that I would like to say. I mean, we're gonna close this. Week. So, do you guys have anything that you want to say to Haitian women, like for them to basically get help or find a way to get out of this situation? Um, I have something that I want to say, but I want to get your opinions first. Um, what I want to say to any Haitian women and their um, key abuse relationship is that 
don't be afraid to speak out even if you're in haiti una north america don't be afraid to speak out because there you have help mm -hmm. you have a lot of government subsidies a lot of government help that, that can help you you can seek help but swaiti also don't be afraid to speak out so i know to tell you about when you move away around there or as you from or do something don't stay because it's not good because they not battle but battle change you then you know what's gonna happen one of these days he might kill you and exactly because that's that? exactly what happened to that case in florida in 2009 where um, the Damas family, Damas family, I believe, mm -hmm. when the guy slit the throat of the wife and five kids. Exactly. Because she was experiencing domestic violence. They were together for 13 years and she la stayed problem. with him. Yeah, la and then one day he decided to just kill all of them with the kids too. Like, do you really want to put yourself through that and your kids? Mm -mm. Like, I don't think so. Exactly. So that's why I say speak out, don't keep it in. And if the man hits you once, this is enough for you to leave the relationship. Don't stay in the relationship because to me, if a man hits you once, he's gonna hit you twice, he's gonna do it again. So mm -hmm. speak out and run for your life. Yeah. And, and I also oh. feel like um, violence is not only physical. A lot of women, they would stay in a relationship for years and years and, you know, getting a man speaking bad to them or, you know, being excessively jealous or possessive or whatever. There are a lot of things that fall into violence. Even if the person is not, you know, raising his hands on you or whatnot, if he's forcing you into sexual acts, he's, you know, doing a whole lot of other things. There are verbal things that are really violent. Yeah. You don't have to stay in that type no, of no, relationship no. too. I'm not saying run out of your marriage. That I'm not here to give you divorce advice, but the way I see it, if, if you can't fix it, let it go. Mm -hmm. And like she said, in Haiti, do you also know that marital rape is not considered a crime? Mm. It's not considered a crime. It's sad. So it's like, what kind of, what are you telling the women, your daughters that are growing up? What, what, are, what are their options? I don't think that they have any, really. Jasmine, you were saying something. No? You weren't saying anything? Okay. So um, lastly, what I would like to say is... Um, there are, like she said, there are subsidies, there are programs. If you live in, in the States, there's um, vi the Violence Against Women Act, the VAWA that was um, granted in 1994 to help victims of domestic abuse. Um, there's a legal center called Family Justice Center in Brooklyn, if you live uh, around that area. It's, help, it's there to um, help provide information to victims about the benefit they can receive without a spouse or the threat of being deported. So if you feel like you're scared because of deporta deportation, go to these centers. It's called the I Family Justice Center. Si ou pe pour pa deporter ou ka still aller na justice. Um Satlan Relay Family Justice Center eh in Brooklyn. Ou bien Google, ou bien um esko I mean sou internet ou ka jwenn tout sans information. Um women group ki ka bo aide sou bezwen aide. Mm -hmm. yes, exactly. Même sou pa kon use computer, fèt si moun nou yo fèl pou ou bien al nan library, yo ka aide ou. Pa jis rete pou pran baton, fè boul boul je ou gonfle men ou tè, or even death. Mm -hmm. On pa vle mouri, right? So, women, I beg of you, I beg of you, seek help. Do not let that man raise his hand on you because it will not end up well. Okay? Or you can do payback and just... <laughs> no, we're not talking about payback. That was bad advice. <laughs> bad advice. So just seek help. There's many groups out there. There's many women in every area that you're in. Please, ladies, seek help. Get educated. Get out of your situation. Find a job, take care of your kids. You don't need a man. Mm -mm. Okay? This is 2013. You can do it all by yourself. Well, you do need a man, but you don't need an abusive man. Well, yeah. I need my man. Yeah. <laughs> we all need a man. Just you need a good one. Okay, so I guess this is it for today, and thank you again for watching. Bye. Bye. Mais après violence, dans le sens, 
les mains mais souffrir. Nous devons savoir qu'on est qui fait ça, c'est lâche. Dans le sens que si il y a fait karaté, si il y a fait zéro, pas de problème, parce qu'on est qu'à casser toujours. C'est parce que Fia sont être faibles qui doit profiter de faire violence. Ça me compte ça. Les pieds juste pour moi, moi-même, au lieu de d'aller mes mains sur un film pour bien faire mon compte divorce, mais au lieu de d'aller mes mains sur un film pour faire une divorce ensemble. Vous n'avez pas appelé mes mains sur un film pour faire une Ça, c'est ce qu'on ne peut pas. Mais, il y a une série de filles. Nous connaissons avec les filles qui ne réagissent pas. Les filles réagissent dans la bouche, à travers la bouche, la plus sale. Là, on sait des mots qui déplacent ces cibles. Les garçons n'ont pas de mots déplacés, mais les garçons ont le plus souvent réagi par la violence. Lorsque une madame qui est mal élevée, quand on sait des mots déplacés pour qu'elle voit des choses, les garçons ont fait des choses, garçons ont parlé qui tellement piquées, les garçons ont dit même qu'ils pas vraiment des grandes paroles piquées, même quand ils mettent des choses à faire des choses, ils sont capables de faire Donc ça, son bagage, si les garçons ont fait qui ça qui fait le vivre si c'est Fia qui ont des gens trop mal élevés, Fia a même tout le besoin de comprendre la parole avec nous, comment nous comporter tout. Comment qui ça le cas dit, qui ça le pas dit, qui ça le café, qui ça le pas café. Par exemple, vous avez pas madame la carreau, qui vient bien l'élever, par exemple. Tout ça, c'est cause. C'est cause qui a fait. Mon foyer n'est pas marcher. Par exemple, si nous soyons là, on est. Les madame les sorties, il dit qu'on est madame les il dit qu'on est là, c'est pas là, c'est 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 si vous avez un comportement qui doit être mal fait, ça va mal être abusif. Abusif, comme ça, vous êtes capable de chercher le moyen pour contrôler ce qui est dans la relation, ce qui n'est pas dans la relation. Mais si vous avez une cause, la situation que vous trouvez, c'est vous-même qui vous cherchez une solution. Parce que moi-même, je suis non violent. Je ne vais pas utiliser la violence. Mais pas de violence non violent. Il y a plus de violence que non violent. Donc, si toutefois, vous avez un peu de violence, vous avez un peu de violence, vous avez un peu de violence. Qui te fait qu'on a la timonie ou pas le passé misère? En plus, la fille a décidé de rester dans le foyer, c'est juste pour sauver la timonie. Qui peut dire que lui-même il va gagner une possibilité économique pour couvrir tous les besoins, lui résilier, lui rester dans le foyer. Mais en plus, la cause de la violence, c'est la fille. S'il ne cherche pas une façon pour le résoudre le problème, le problème va continuer, continuer, continuer jusqu'à ce que... Parce que le monde qui est faible, c'est le cas de le monde. Donc c'est ça qui fait. Si toutefois, on ne connaissait toujours seulement vraiment comme bâton, mais il faut regarder qui l'a utilisé, bâton, ça qui l'a pas utilisé. Donc c'est en gros, c'est une émotion que ça a développé. Pour nous faire sûr que nous faisons pour tout le monde. Parfois, on gagne un monde, mais...